Hey everyone, it's Jeff from Program Versus World. Today we're going to run through client libraries in Adobe AEM 6.1. Um, as usual, we're not going to do a really big technical deep dive or get into the weeds, but we are going to build a client library folder, put some JavaScript and some CSS source files in it, and then turn around and import them in our existing website. So uh, well, let's get started. Let's log in as admin admin first of all, and go back to where we stopped in tutorial one. If I go to my website manager and double click my main page, we can see right off the bat that our existing main page was pretty simplistic. Is this actually gonna come up on not? There we go. It's just a head with a title and an, and an H1, and we need to import some CSS and some JavaScript uh, libraries in here to start having this thing take shape. So in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, DE Lite and open up our apps folder. Make sure our components and templates are in there, we're good. So what we're gonna have to do today is add what's called a client library folder. Now this is a special type of folder in CQ that it searches for and detects in a few different directories. And when it does, it, uh, it basically takes all the, all the JavaScript and source files that it was told to take out of there, uh, automatically renders them up in a minified format for you and gets them ready so that you can include them in your application using the category name, as it's called, which is, uh, categories is basically an array of names that allow you to specify multiple ways to get access to it. I'm sure having multiple ways of getting access to it is, uh, you know, there was a need for it somewhere. I've never really seen one have more than one name that was ever used at a time. Um, but it's a nice feature nonetheless, and that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna create one. Now, uh, I told you there's a specific set of directories that it looks for these in, and it may actually be configurable. I haven't done the research to know. I just know that uh, the apps folder is the most common place to put it because that's where you're usually developing components. But It'll also work inside the Etsy directory and it works inside the libs directory, both of which are directories you won't touch very often. Libs should be a no-no. You should never have to touch anything in libs. Etsy, it's possible that you may be in Etsy designs creating your own designs one day. And that's another subject that's out of scope for right now that we may talk about later. So we're gonna put it in our apps folder. And the way we do this is we basically right click our apps folder and say create. And you'll notice that there's no pre-built dialogues for this. We're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way where we create a node and let's say give it a name. We'll call it Zurb Foundation. You'll see where the name shows up in a bit. And then go CQ Client Library Folder. Say okay, hit save, and we now have a client library folder. It doesn't do much, but it's there. So what, what we built this library folder for was to hold JavaScript and CSS files. So let's create a couple directories real fast just to keep these organized. We'll create a folder called source. I don't know what I was spelling there before. And we'll create a directory called style. We'll put our CSSs in style. CSSs, is that the way you make that plural? We'll put our CSS style sheets in style. We'll put our JavaScripts in source and we'll just keep them organized. While we're in here, let's create two files really fast, a js.txt and a css.txt, and I'll tell you what those do in a moment. But <clears throat> let's talk about, um, well, let's don't name it yet. Let's go ahead and put our sources and styles in. If you physically, I may have to close this for just a second and reconnect. I'm actually gonna to connect to the web dev in order to upload these files. And to do that, I just say connect to server. I put in the server URL of the actual website, just like I was browsing to it. Same credentials, admin, admin. And voila, if I go now to localhost, I can now see my apps folder and I've got my source and style directory that we just made. So let me go grab some, first of all, let me grab the style download uh, I want foundation CSS and this app CSS because I want to show you a trick well not really a trick I just want to show you how cool it is and the way it works whoop style I want to paste those two things in there then go to downloads I just want no 
I don't want the minified. I want the regular one. And this is the unminified version. Thank you, localhost, for remembering that I had to open that way, paste that item there. And that should be all there is to that famous last words. We refresh, and I can tell you something happened because Apple has populated the DS store garbage everywhere. We'll get rid of that. But if I go into our sources and our styles, we'll see that app and foundation are definitely in there. We can open those up if we want. And we can see that foundation JavaScript's in there. First things first, though, I am going to clean up all this DS store stuff before it gets unbearably complicated or before I start zipping this up. These underscore files too can go if you're also on a Mac. You just temp. It's the way the file system works. Okay, that's much nicer. So now we have a client library directory. We have some libraries in it. So basically when we use this library, we're going to import everything that, that, that pertains to Zurb Foundation, or at least the CSS and the JavaScript. So that being said, we need to give our library a name, and then, or at least a single name. We can give it multiple names if we want. And but when we give it a name, we're giving ourselves a way to include it later without needing to know the path or even where it is. As long as CQ knows where it is, it's fine. We can say, give me the Zurb Foundation CSS, and then the sheets will just come over like magic. So in order to do that, we need to go down in our property editor down here and say uh, categories, uh, click on the multi button, then hit add. This is just a way we can use this little plus symbol to add multiple items to an array. And I do not want sure foundation, I want zerb dot foundation. <clears throat> and then we say okay hit save and basically we've added one element to an array and that first element is the value zurb.foundation. So we can use the value zurb.foundation to actually include that into our Sightly template so we can put it in the header. We need to configure our manifests to actually load the individual files. And the way we do that is if we come in here and double click them, a good habit to get into is using directive base sort of to give it a base directory to work in. And then we just put foundation.css inside there. And that manifest will tell the loader, that's the first file I want you to, to build out for me. And basically it'll minify this for you and create a temporary location for you to pick it up in your header and, and uh, allow you to continually add things to it and add onto it to expand your library. But this is about all we really need to do there. So let's go ahead and close that. We'll come back into it later when I show you something else. And let's go ahead and import it. Now I noticed before, even though this is relatively not that important, that I didn't have the doc type defined. That still did not fix the issue. Okay, so we want to use Sightly to import this client lib now into our HTML. And there's quite a few different ways we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and predefine um, the library functions I want to use in the HTML tag. You could put this all in as one huge one-liner, but I don't want to do that. In our tag up here, let's say data uh, sightly, we're going to use a new directive, which is called use uh, dot client lib. And inside here, we're going to give the path to where the Sightly template is. And if you ever get curious as to where that is, it should be libs granite. Uh, it's still called Sightly templates client lib HTML, right? So libs granite Sightly templates client lib HTML. Yep, so far the spelling looks good. That'll get us access to a, a few different functions that we can call inside that library. And one of the very first ones we're gonna use today is we're gonna use that SOY tag just to render an empty node. We're gonna say data SOY call, all right. And then we're gonna say, I always have to do that or I end up not closing it or doing something goofy. Um, client lib. Thanks, autocorrect. Client lib.css, and we're going to use the categories. 
I'm going to use single quotes here, and we're going to say Zerb, sure, Zerb Foundation. And that should be the way you call that template and says, hey, give me all the style sheets for the category Zerb Foundation. Uh, concatenate them all together, minify them, and then render the link to where you put it right here. One more time, I hit save all on it. And this is usually where I refresh and we see a total disaster. Oh, it worked. So we can see that the font changed. Now let's go look at the, look at the source. If we look now, there is a style sheet uh, uh, href in here now, but it's pointed to a directory that doesn't really exist. There's nothing underneath apps that has min.js in it. So that's obviously telling you it rendered that dynamically. And if we click on it, it's, it's there. So what would happen if we added some code? Did I really just close that? No. What did I, I just close? Uh, I'll find it here in a minute. Okay. What would happen if we went in and actually added some code to the apps? Let's, let's create a class called test. And we'll just do something goofy, like set the width to 10%. And then we come in here and we say, I also want you to add app CSS, hit save all. Now, if we come back and refresh, we still only have one Zerb Foundation min CSS file. But if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll see that our test got appended to the bottom. So every new thing we add to that file, we'll turn around and add it to the next one in order, and it makes a file for us that's already minified. And in some cases, it can even be gzip, depending on how you have that configured. So if we can, obviously we can do the same thing for the JavaScript, right? And we can say like, let's say the base is source, and we want foundation JS. It's probably too many spaces. It doesn't matter. It's gonna ignore the white spaces. And then we can come into our component itself. Let's take the same exact line, except this time we're gonna call clientlib.js and hit save all. Now, if we look at the frame source, we also have a minified JS file that exists in, ooh, and did a nice job minifying that. So we also have a minified JS file that's now been included at the bottom and it already included all the tags for us. So that's basically how you import a library. Now, if we come in here and look really carefully though at the console, we're gonna have a, an error at least. Yeah, we do. Uh, foundation requires jQuery and we didn't import jQuery. Now there's a couple ways we can do this. We could go into libs and I know it, ex I just happen to know it exists in um, Etsy client libs foundation. Here, there is a cq.jQuery category that'll import jQuery to us. And so I could just put this up top to satisfy the dependency, but that wouldn't very be, be very much AEM-like or client library-like. So why don't we tell the client library that it has a dependency on jQuery and handle it that way? And the way we do that is with another multi-property called dependencies. Let me make sure I spelled that right. And in here we can add that jQuery, cq.jQuery's category is required for our Zerb Foundation library. Now if we refresh, we're going to see that jQuery, utils, grant, a whole bunch of other stuff was actually put in here, but eventually we hit jQuery min.js out of the client libs directory. And now if we go over to our console, the problem's solved. And even though this console is relatively beta because this is Safari's, um, what's it called, their technology preview. We can see that jQuery actually did work, but what that means, I have no idea. This console is alien to me. <laughs> but um, that's basically how it works. Now there's one other thing we could do. We can take these two guys out right here 
And instead of saying client lib or JS, we could say all, right? For just for right now. All right, we'll put that line in there. And essentially the same thing happens, except you notice um, the CSS is on top this time. Uh, there's no way for us to control the order. The CSS will most likely always come first. So if we ever get in a situation in which we want to absolutely have finite control over where each one of the libraries go, we're gonna have to use the each individual callouts. And that's pretty much why I just leave, I just get used to using the individual callouts. As inefficient as it may be, it still is uh, like positive control over the order in which they go. For instance, if we took the CSS, I don't know why you would do this, but I put it underneath the JavaScript and then we hit save all. And now we'll see that when I rendered, the CSS got rendered way down here underneath the JavaScript. And I don't think it really matters in this case, uh, but some templates and different languages will get upset especially if there is another section of it that has to get rendered down at the bottom. And when that specific type of thing happens, it can get really confusing as to what to do inside of a client lib template. Um, and there are ways you can do that, but it's way outside of the scope of what we're talking about today. Today, we're just talking about throwing a generic style sheet up, being able to have a single place where this is configured. And because this is underneath our apps directory, it makes this real easy to find it later so we can zip it back up in a package, which ironically is what I'm going to do next. All right, so that's basically all we were really gonna accomplish today. So what did we get accomplished? Well, we created a client library, we gave it a name, we hooked up all of its dependencies, we added some CSS, we added some JavaScript to it, and then we turned around and we used it. Um, the next question you may have is, how often am I gonna have to do this? And the answer is, well, it depends. It's not unusual to have a client library with a component because it uses um, some special JavaScript that only exists for that specific component. It's, it's very common to see JavaScript deployed with a component. It's not really typical unless you're building a site from scratch to see client libraries being built up the way that we're building them. But either way, it's still used the same exact way. Uh, if there's a specific library that your component needs, you can completely keep it in the apps directory, create a client library folder and use it that way. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's the best way to use it. That way when someone gets your component, they get everything that's needed, not only to render it, but to make it work as well. Um, and that's pretty much all I intended to cover today. So this is Jeff from Programmer vs. World, and uh, you guys have a good one. I'll see you on the next tutorial.